All right, ladies, as promised, on the second day now, we have a couple of interviews with a few of the players. And Dario was fortunately enough already at the venue quite early. What brought you here like four hours before it actually starts? Oh, um, I mean, there's not much to do before that. There has really not uh, a lot of stuff around the hotel and the venue. So why not come early and just, uh, you know, acclimate to the area and start to feel comfortable? I saw that you were playing a very interesting game. I mean, I had actually trouble in following what's going on on screen, so can you please explain to us what exactly that was, because I got worried. <laughs> I've actually been talking about it quite a lot lately. Um, it's called. Super I can see why. Probably everyone is asking, dude, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> it's called Super Hexagon, and it's a, it's a, to me it's a very meditative game. It's um, You basically just control a triangle that has to dodge like, shapes that come at you left and right and so it's a very simple yet complex and hot game i warn you right now you might have a seizure just watching one of the people play that game so i'm pretty sure there are probably a couple of youtube videos online so be very careful if you watch those i was standing behind him and was like what the hell is going on with this monitor i got worried for a second i was about to call an ambulance <laughs> my hand started shaking already um, yeah, but talking a little bit about the tournament itself, before we go into your amazing group that you're probably very excited about, though I saw a thread on Reddit about that as well, uh, let's talk a little bit about the tournament itself. Last time that we were here, you were actually casting together with Apollo, so how do you enjoy the tournament and uh, how different is it being a caster here and being a player? Well, I mean, it's it's first of all, it's very different because Too Good and In Control are not here, <laughs> so that changes a lot. Um, so you mean the troll level is a little bit lower? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit more serious than 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 last time, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm much happier to be a player than to be casting. Even though ca casting is fun, but um, whenever I'm casting and not playing, I just you just want to take control, and when you when you see somebody not play good, you get so angry as a player because. What are you doing, you scrub? Let me do yeah, that. Exactly. I mean, you know, you know how it is. I think even as a caster, when you see see somebody play not as good, you sometimes get a little bit mad. But as a player. Yeah, sure. but I probably would try to take over and then completely fail. Yeah. So you would at least succeed. Yeah, maybe, maybe I would <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> And uh, the venue itself, I mean, you've been to so many offline events in uh, general. How much do you like it here? Is it very different from uh, playing, let's say, DreamHack, MLG, and all the other tournaments that you usually attend? It's uh, a lot calmer because there's not as many um, spectators in the player area. So um, it's not too crowded, which is kind of nice uh, for a change. Uh, we have a little bit of a launch here uh, with some food, some drinks. That's always good, and every tournament should have that, I think. Uh, it's just an area where I could also just go and sit and eat something. And But overall, it's pretty standard. It's n like nothing out of the ordinary. Do you miss Martin? Yeah, absolutely. Man, every single event. I'm so sad. He needs to come back. I actually asked like two days before I came here, I asked one of the organizers, okay guys, do you have Martin the masseuse again at the event? And he was like, unfortunately not this time, he could make it or I don't know what the reason is. But yeah, that was the best thing about Asus every single time. You yeah, could get that massage in the morning. So you would, you actually used it a lot, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. He taught me a lot too. Like uh, he helped me with my posture more and how to you know become a little bit more healthy and stuff. So he, he's extremely helpful and awesome guy. So. I wouldn't mind meeting him like every single week of my life, I think. He's really good too. Uh, how is it actually like with your wrists and your posture and everything in the past? Like some time ago you had problems with that. Is that a lot better right now? Yeah, I don't I don't really have any issues anymore. I mean, sometimes after I've been like to two or three events, you can get a little bit tense and have a, a few issues, but nothing like that not everybody has, I think. So I don't, I don't really have my carpal tunnel problems anymore. Talking a little bit about uh, yesterday in general, and especially about your performance in the group, you already talked to uh, Greg and myself and said that you didn't feel like on tip-top shape because you were pretty exhausted and also a little bit tired. You proved that in your first best of five series immediately with the 1-3 against Runa, which people did not really expect. Can you just this a little bit through the group and uh, how you felt going into those games? Well, first of all, I have some strange history that apparently I always mess up the first series or at least the first map of, of, of the day, like very consistently. If you look at my last like six tournaments, you always see I immediately lose. Like that's the beginning of every single tournament I do. And then I come back. <laughs> so, so you hate best of one formats? Yeah, um, if you look at my team league results, they're really, really bad because, you know, I always lose my first match and then, you know, you know that's it <laughs> in a team league. But 
so it's it's much better the cheese out group because you kind of get like one one off game you can get without getting in trouble so after you defeated Runa and well you, let's jump straight to the consolation match that you played you had to face him again what did you think when you saw that you had to go up against the same guy that kind of demolished you in the first set I was actually happy because uh, first of all um, playing for me it's the more I play against the single player I think the better I do because I kind of adapt a little bit to him and especially against Protoss because most Protoss players in Europe at least only have like one or two styles so as soon as you've seen those styles and get used to the timings you you don't have as hard of a time and I know I didn't play so well in the first in, in the first sets so so your group was actually done like quite early, but you stayed at the venue anyways because you wanted to know, uh, well, you said like there's not a lot to do at the hotel, so you wanted to watch the games and you saw that amazing series between Hostim and Daishi. Uh After that was <laughs> Greg with a stare for a second, like, um, so after that was, <laughs> after that was over, we had the group drawings and right from the beginning you were like, not Asia, not Asia, not Asia. <laughs> In the end, Semla had a bit of a present for you. You actually got the second chance because they realized they made a mistake and had to redo it. I mean, I got screwed over a second time. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> I think that was what happened. So how did that feel? Yeah, that's just great. Just great. But I mean, it's fine. I can beat Teja. Um I lost him 2-3 at home Story Cup, so that's kind of close. But uh, I lost, like, I've never won against him yet. So um, maybe it's going to be a first. But even if I lose to Teja, I can defeat Bishu and uh, Hyun, I believe. Hyun I beat at Home Story Cup. Mm -hmm. Bishu actually defeated me at Remake because he plays he plays very strange. But I think I got used to that by now. So I can I can do okay. What did you do yesterday and today? Did you look up VODs of those guys? Or are you just right now in a flow where you say, okay, I have my builds for the certain matchups? Or did you just really look at the matches that they played in the past, maybe at this tournament, to get a bit of an inkling what they are going to do? Well, my problem is I play a little bit of a different style than most people. So watching bots doesn't help me as much because my games just don't develop in the same kind of way sometimes. Um, I I know how Yan plays, I know how Bishu plays, and I definitely know how Teja plays. So I'll, I'll just try to play my standard and adapt accordingly throughout the games. Do you practice with Teja a lot? I, I don't practice so much with Teja. Um, most of the guys in Korea don't like to play crossover. And I can't really blame them because they get the best practice possible on Korea without lag. So there's really not much reason for them to play on North America. How's your practice going in general right now? Um, you uh, said that with WCS Europe, you actually like had a lot of more motivation, like uh, changing your practice schedule. So how does that actually look like? I've been playing more custom games. Um, the past two weeks, I, I couldn't practice as much because I was at Red Bull and I also, you know, had a, lots of stuff to do in general, organ like to organize and stuff. But overall, um, practice is going pretty well. Um, I think, except against Protoss, I'm playing as better uh, better than I ever have. But uh, I, need, I need to definitely improve my CVP. And I'm gonna, I already got two guys um, set up that when I get back, I'm gonna be playing a lot of custom games with. So. If you don't go to a tournament, if you have just a regular week and uh, there's nothing special going on, do we have like uh, a rhythm? Do we have like a certain hour where you wake up and certain training hours per day? Or how does a normal TLO day look like? Well, uh, for a while I was trying to follow like a very strict training schedule, but I, I realized that's too inflexible in StarCraft because I'm going to have team league at like random times and I'm going to have tournament qualifications at random times. So nowadays I just try to fulfill certain elements of every day i try to do exercise every day i try to go running or swimming every day even though i haven't been holding up to that entirely but it's getting better i think and um i try to wake up early even though also i haven't been that great lately but <laughs> no like for me it's uh, sometimes i have like a month that i do insanely well and i follow everything and then i have a month that i'm like very very bad even though i don't know for me it's sometimes that having that kind of month isn't so bad for me either because next month i'm gonna do better with everything it's i don't know i need to find a little bit more structure still but it's better than ever anyway i think <laughs> that's not too convincing i actually like i go through through kind of the same things like when it comes to like organizing like small stuff like 
uh, invoices, papers that you get and organizing things. I always promise myself that I'm going to be a little bit more organized about it and I improve a little bit, but it's still so horribly bad that I feel like, yeah, I improved, but I'm not happy with it. So you go through those phases where suddenly for like a week or two, everything works really, really fine. And then you fall back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then you realize, hmm, I probably need to get back to on track again. So yeah. yeah I, actually kind of hard in our profession um, even though it's more of a luxury problem because most of the people that work in our in eSport have so much freedom over their own life but because you have so much freedom you need to have insane amounts of discipline yeah. to actually do the stuff as good as you can if that makes sense, yeah. yeah definitely for me it would help me the most is actually like my workout routine because yeah. I would wake up early in the morning go to the gym and take my day from there but that kind of forces me to go get up early and as it uh, happens that coincidence is also with the uh, WCS America for example so I catch catch those games and that kind of helps quite a lot if you have a regular schedule but especially for a player it's like so hard to maintain right because you mentioned the team leagues earlier you mentioned like tournaments if you play online you have to jump through three different time zones it must be really annoying yeah yeah it is kind of annoying um I think the thing that helps most definitely though is just waking trying to wake up early every day because that's going to be like your fixed point. If you tell yourself you're going to wake up 8 a.m. every day, you're not going to go to bed like at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. And uh, we never schedule games for me to be that late. So that's like I never I never have to play like insane amounts of hours. It's just sometimes you play early, sometimes in the night, sometimes in the afternoon. But it's not like I have to wake up, like, go to bed at 3 or 4 a.m. Okay, so coming back to the group, who else besides you is getting out of group A? Obviously, Deja. I mean, come on. Why do you even ask that? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're, maybe you're not being like the team guy, but you're like brutally honest and you say like, okay, you know what? Teja's TVZ actually sucks. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm going to crush him, but he's still going to be Bishu and Tian. <laughs> okay. Score between you and Teja. 3-2 because um, I am... You don't want to make him feel bad? No, because I'm... Okay, so here, like, I, I used to lose 0-3. Then I was 3-1. At Home Story Cup, I was 2-3. So now I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to win 3-2 and then 3-0. 3-1 and then 3-0. <laughs> and the next three encounters. Okay, so I'm already looking forward to that. Thank you for the time and uh, for the interview. And, uh, yeah, good luck for the games later on. Thank you.